In a world of organisms, it's natural that living things interact with one another. In some cases, those interactions are closer and more important than others. But what is very interesting is how some interactions evolve into species relationships, where some organisms may actually become dependent on each other in special ways. When living things live closely together and form interdependencies, the relationships are called symbiotic. There are three major types of symbiosis. Let's take a look at a few examples. The first type of symbiotic relationship is called commensalism. This is when one species in a relationship benefits, but the other is not affected at all. A very good example of this is moss. Moss has a commensal relationship with trees, because it uses tree bark as a place to grow. The moss gets a couple of significant advantages from this. First, the biggest survival challenge for moss is drying out. By living on trees in forested areas, moss is much more likely to get protective shade. Second, by attaching itself to bark, moss has many nooks and crannies to embed itself into. That way, the moss can get larger and grow thicker without falling off. But what about the trees? In this relationship, trees are not positively or negatively affected. The second type of symbiotic relationship is called parasitism. This is when one species benefits at the expense of the other. A very good example of this is tree fungus. You may have seen these fungi growing on the sides of trees before. They go by many different names. Bracket fungus, polypores, conchs, shelf fungi, and some are even called hoof fungus because they look like a horse's hoof. But one thing they all have in common is that they are tree parasites. When these fungi are small, they don't do much damage to trees. But as they grow, they send fungal roots under the bark of the tree, interfering with the tree's movement of water and nutrients. The fungus also steals water and nutrients from the tree, all the while growing larger and infecting more of the tree. Eventually, these parasitic fungi can kill the tree. Interestingly, the death of the tree technically ends the symbiotic relationship, but the fungi lives on. The fungi switches from parasite to decomposer and lives off the dead tissue of the tree. Obviously, in this relationship, the fungi get all the benefits while the trees are harmed. The third type of relationship is called mutualism. This is when both species benefit from the relationship. An excellent example of this is bees and the flowers they pollinate. When bees travel from flower to flower, they collect nectar and pollen to use as food. But the flowers benefit as well. Every time a bee visits a flower, its pollen sticks to the bee's body. When the bee moves to the next flower, some of that pollen is transferred to the female parts of the next flower, fertilizing it. So in this mutually beneficial relationship, bees get food and flowering plants gain a reliable method of fertilization. Now that you know the different types of symbiosis, think about how these relationships affect humans as well. For example, many of the plants we eat depend on bees for fertilization. How would we be affected if bees disappeared? <laughs>